Hello, welcome back to Baron Saga. Uh, we've bought everything we could, we don't need to rest, so I guess we'll just leave. Rook, wait, please. She said she'd be here. We need her. You can tell he's terrified of leaving, as though he'll be giving up on Juno. I'm sure she'll catch up with us. Ewin looks out across the lake with a thousand miles there. He says nothing. We've got problems, says Ivor. The whole place is flooded. We could try to walk the muddy parts, but it will be slow going. We could try to float the caravan over the lake, but we might tip or get stuck. Or we could just go around the whole thing, but... No idea how long that will take. What do you think? Mm. For the river, yes, this is the muddy part. The tour around the flooding, no. We don't have anything to pay them with. Let's see. The locals become a lot more helpful when you swallow your pride and start offering food for help crossing the river. They give you small fishing boats to borrow and show you the area with the best chance of making it across. You hope your luck holds out as you launch from the shore. Despite, or you suspect because of your vigilance, the locals from Seagull Home don't try anything underhanded as they take you in their small boats to the other side of the lake over several trips. You leave them with a generous amount of food and they row back to their town. You hope it's worth it to buy some space from Bellower will have to track his arms through the mud on foot. Well, I guess it was worth it. We paid one day worth of food for whoever know how long it's gonna take us. Ooh, it would take us to make a detour around the lake. As you're nodding off to sleep, shouts of fire pulls you back to your attention. Flames quickly consume a supply organ and a few tents. Woman cries out, My boy! and points to a burning tent closest to the outlying wall. Two of the giants are motionless, staring at the spreading fire of terror in their eyes. Uh, going after the boy. Wrapping your cloak around you, the smoke, flames and tent become a blur as you grab the boy and slice through the back canvas with your hunting knife. You meet the ashamed look of the older Varl while the crow cheers on your heroic act. Unfortunately, this play wagon did not make it. What in the depths was that about? Something about fa the fire, what Liv tells you. I've heard of this before, they don't like it. Doesn't change what happened, you think to yourself. Okay, now we are pretty much screwed. As you're about to head off to sleep for the night, one of pulls you aside. I have a couple concerns I wanted to speak to you about in private. Find a quiet place to talk. What's on your mind? How well do you know the people traveling with us? How many strangers are in the caravan now? Who are you worried about? I've been watching folks since I joined you. Your companions from Skogar, they are loyal. I mean, it seems pretty clear that they will die to protect you. I suppose I'll do the same. What about the Varl? You don't even know half those warriors. You're telling me they have no problem following a man's orders now? After everything that happened in Einartoft? Uh, well... I trust Ivar to handle it. He's fearless, I'll give you that, but look at him, he's run ragged. He can't be there all the time. What happens the first time the Val don't want to do what you tell them? If Krumrik gave the word, I guarantee at least half would follow. Let's be honest, they could take this caravan by force at any time if they wanted to. And what do you suggest then? I suggest growing some balls instead of hoping it all works out, Hook. They're not the biggest problem though. There's a mender with us, a mender who pulls lightning out of the sky and tells us what to do and where to go. Myself, I think we lacked out when his mentor didn't show up in sync or home. Eowyn's just an apprentice? What in the depths is his master capable of? Think about it, Rook. What do you really know about Eowyn? 
I heard they were found practically dead in the middle of nowhere when the dredge started showing up. Then an enormous serpent shows up at Einardov after tearing the world in half, takes one look at Eivind and bolts. Suddenly they need our help instead of the mentor council? How does that make any damn sense? Hmm. Eivind could have taken control long before now. A shrewd man with ambitions can be very patient. I'm grateful for what you've done to get us this far, Rook. But it's always been about trust. I think it's time to part ways, so to speak. Nothing personal. Suddenly you gasp for air. When you look down, Onus is holding a knife buried deep in your ribs. Your vision blurs and blood fills your sight. You gasp again. There's a beard whistle and the camp becomes a blur of motion. Onus fires from frost to bell, leap into action, cutting people down. As Olive turns to fire on the man, Ona fronts her through and pulls the blade from her back without even breaking a, his stride. She drops like a sack of flour. Ona heads straight for it with his unbridled terror. You rise to your feet through the pain. Oddleaf is dead, somehow you find the strength to cleave the nearest traitor in two, but you can't find the breath to shout. You think your lung might be punctured. Onev clutches Alet's wrist amidst the commotion, tosses her bow aside and pulls her into the deep woods. Her eyes meet yours across the campsite. No! Her lips say, though you can't hear the words. A dozen men appear between you as Ivor steps into view, as fearsome as you've ever seen him. We'll take you, we'll take Kramer, we'll take you, but I can't level you up just yet. Mm. I'll give you this, and we have one strength resist. Okay. That escalated quickly. Okay, one archer. So I want him here. Him in the middle. And you somewhere not here. How far can he go? Okay, so we'll just go like this. You take care of him. Somehow I'm not even surprised that Olaf is not among them. Coward. Bird of prey for hours of great range. Whoa. No, no, no. I want you to move this way. To shoot him. Do you have the tempest? No better than ram. Try killing him well. Take us two hits anyway. Again.
Or leave the guy alone. He already has a path. Destroy his armor now. And I'm gonna kill this guy first. Of course, we can do this again. Okay, and he nearly killed him with that. With just that. What use mend on him? I'm not gonna make it easy for them. You destroy his armor. Kill him. hope that Brute stays alive. Where's Alet? shouts Ivor, tearing through the nearest bandit, but you're already hobbling into the deep woods where they disappeared, knowing the battle raging behind you. In a haze of pain, you start to think you've lost their tracks. Then you hear Alet screaming in the distance, followed by sil silence. You tear through the trees. In a small clearing, Alet lies with her back against a tree. Her hands and her clothes are covered in blood. She stares vacantly ahead, unblinking. Beside her is the body of Onef, an arrow buried in his right eye as if placed there by hand. She looks in your direction and then at Onef. I kill him, she says. Alet, are you alright? You cringe as much from the pain as the appearance of Alette after her bloody struggle with Onef. No, I, I'm... I'm not hurt. I have no choice. That your chest, you're bleeding! Suddenly she's at your side, putting pressure on the wound. I, I can fix this, where is my needle? Odeif! Anyone? Ivor, I found them. Just as your sight goes black, you see Eowind, Ivor and Alette standing over you. He's going to make it. Your eyes open to the sound of Alet's voice. Normally, I wouldn't like that. I only hope I did enough. I'll survive. Dad! Alet stops herself from hugging your bandaged, bandaged chest, pulling your head to, to her instead. The words come out easier than you expected. Odlif? It's a good thing Eowind is he was here. She's going to pull through, though it was a nasty wound. We managed to kill most of those traitors, sons of bitches, and the rest fled into the woods. There were, there were a lot of people I couldn't save. You did everything you could, Eowind. Nobody expects you to raise the dead. Eowind frowns deeply, putting a head on to his forehead. Why did Onif do this, Rook? He was talking to me right before it happened. He thought my leadership would get us killed. Utter bastard! All this time we had no idea. A kill killed a good half dozen of Onef's men by himself. He told me Onef was running Frostvel the whole time. He left Frostvel behind when he saw a better opportunity. Guess that relationship is over. A kill was always just the barking dog you put in the yard to find out who your enemies are. It was no accident Onef went after those of us from Skog. He must have thought uh, with us gone, he would take the banner and the rest would fall in line. Or at worst, they would take all the supplies for themselves and leave the rest at stretch bait. We have to be more careful, we can't just let anyone join the caravan anymore. Where do you draw the line, Ivar? I don't know, Rook. 
I really don't. None of this changes the fact that Bellower is out there somewhere, following us. That swamp around Sigur home might buy us some time, but we've got to keep moving. Your body aches all over, but I was right. The road calls. The caravan is already starting to pack up camp. That's so cool. Otley first. How is the wound? You notice Otley wins as she rises to greet you. It's doing a lot better. When I saw it happen, I thought for sure. Well, I'm really glad you you would have missed me. Rook? <laughs> she smiles. Without Ewin, that's all you could have done. Instead, you'll have to put up with my trap a little longer. It still aches like you wouldn't believe, though. Oh, maybe you heard, heard you took a stabbing yourself. I guess things could have gone worse. How's your husband? Oddleaf's smile falls like a lead weight. I'm sorry, Rook. I'm sorry I didn't tell you sooner. He died in Einar Toft. It just didn't seem like the right time to, you know, put that burden on you. I should have said something. It's been lonely without him. I'm glad to have Alet around. And you, Rook? What do you think about the caravan? You mean, should we start kicking people out? That's a tough one. Usually I'll be the first to give you a dirty look for suggesting it. On the other hand, I got a sword in my back. All the things for a long moment before signing. Don't send anyone away. Just make sure nothing happens to Alet. I'll let you get some rest. Okay, thanks. I'll take you up on that. You know, you're welcome to keep me company. When I'm a little more awake, I mean, I'll talk to you later. Look who it is! Still not dead! How are things, Rook? I can never guess with you, Ekil. I heard you helped thrive off the traitors when Onev attacked us, and it leaves me well, always wondering. What's your deal? I'm not so hard to understand. Why don't you try asking instead of telling? Why didn't you warn us about Onev? Didn't I? How many times did I have to call him a traitor before you got the message? What do you want me to say? Watch out! Oh, is going to murder your whole family! He didn't feel me on the details. He was always like that. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if he tried to convince you of, to off me. But listen, I don't need to know, so keep it to yourself. Why did you stick with him? I don't know, Brooke. Family makes you do weird things. You know what the worst part is? He became my kin when he married my sister. She died of a fever one night. But she didn't. She wasn't sick. He killed her. I don't know why he did it. Maybe he just felt like it. I was so furious. I got so angry that I wanted him to back. I could kill him without a second thought. But that, that wasn't enough. I wanted him to feel sick about it. Puke his guts out. And somehow, somehow that turned into overtime. He never cared, and I gave up and did what he wanted. Don't know how it happened. But when I attacked you in Frostville, guess I'll just say it was my idea. <sighs> okay, you're welcome to stay with us then. Had no plans to go anywhere. So you're going to let me walk around with my own axe and everything? That doesn't mean I'm not watching you. I can accept that, you're a good man. Okay, I need to get going. And I need to take a piss. You're not the only busy man around here, you know. You shake your head as I kill steps away from camp. Okay, but we desperately can't buy you. Yep. All we can do is leave and hope that we'll find some supplies on the way. Since we are in the middle of nowhere and we only have three days worth of food. Okay, I see some tents. It looks like a village. Someone's been nicking extra goods from the supplies, a concerned woman tells you. Counting this myself yesterday. No mistake, this keeps up, we'll all be starving before long. Mm, ask Clansman. 
if they see anything suspicious. Notice anything unusual on the wagons? We ask several groups in the caravan. The men to shake their heads, though they ask no questions when their concern is spreading throughout. Please tell me it's a some place we can camp and where we can buy supplies. Okay. The villagers here are completely oblivious to this way, the destruction that is coming. All we've seen is some dark figures far off, they tell you. Aside from a few young families, they're reluctant to pick up their things and join you. And I didn't ask anyone to join me. <laughs> okay, but we can get a bit. Oh, it's uh, cost eight. Yeah, it's every rest, uh, every turn. It's tempting, I have to say. Okay. Actually, no. <laughs> no. We're fine. Trinkets wise. Oh, god damn it, I forgot to. I forgot to rest, yeah. So, rest. And leave. <laughs> we need at least normal morale. Ahead you find what appears to be a good number of peasants surrounded by brigands. One of the armed men looks over his shoulder and says, Godspeed them, this is all I need. Listen, don't interfere and one of these supply wagons is yours. While remaining silent, the peasant plead to you with their eyes. What's going on here? Nothing concerning you, he replies. And before you start telling me otherwise, these are my clansmen, though they could run off with every scrap of food in the village. Now, all I want is you to move on, so take your share or don't. Take the supplies. You nod, and a few of your men take hold of the supply wagon, bringing it into the caravan. Other clansmen take a bit of coaxing. They eventually turn their backs to the scene and move on, but in lower spirits. It wasn't worth it. A scout returns with a nearly frozen child. I almost stepped on her in the snow. Looks like she must have been running from something, he says. Patches of blue mottle her pale skin, but her chest rises and falls ever so slightly. Even just carrying her along could kill her in a state like this, says woman. We could be in danger here, on some another. Mm. Stop and rest and tend to girl. The, uh, the, as the caravan tends rise, a fire is built beside the girl who is covered in furs and ointments. Progress is slow, but soon you see the girl alive enough to swallow water and some heated broth. When you wait the next day, a healer tells you the girl should be fine in time. The imposing godstone of Bjorfu approaches. His severe visage makes it feel like he's watching you even now. The caravan spreads out, happy to be free of the confining forest and in open fields. Hogan pulls you aside to show you some red berries growing on an ash tree that looks like it was chopped down long ago. 
They shouldn't be growing here, he says excitedly. I haven't seen this in a long time. He and Mogum busily go about collecting the berries. In fact, in awe of Beowulf, some of the caravan crack cakes of mead and wine before anyone can stop them. To the only god that matters, they shout. Everyone drinks and you're glad for the merry man that has swept over the caravan. Join Hogun in collecting the berries. What exactly are those? you ask Hogun. When I would travel to Borisgard with my father, sometimes he would buy us a few of these, Hogun replies. Couldn't be lucky or find. See for yourself. You try one and can feel energy returning to your tired limbs. Not taking a few more would be a wasted opportunity, you figure. As the hour becomes late, the caravan is eventually ready to get back on the road. The day by Björn Stone is one of the few memories that hasn't been tarnished by the specter of bad fortune, you think to yourself. Okay, we may get to rainy week before supplies <laughs> run out. Our supply is missing! By uh, the woman by wagon says to you. And look! Tracks! Right here they look like trolling footprints, but my husband and I follow them into the wilderness away. They meet up with some adult tracks, not telling how many. I send scouts. Yep. We round up some volunteers to depart quietly. They returned that evening with reports of a few tracks that ultimately lead nowhere. Someone may be trying to hide their tracks, but you don't have time to continue the search. Rainweek is more of a smattering of farmhouses than a proper town. Though judging by stray dredge stalking through empty fields, it is barely even that anymore. Ravenick comes and goes as a long series of farmhouses, abandoned and crawling with dredge. The farmers have probably already fled to Burrowsgard. We try to hurry past, but are eventually spotted. Dredge start ambling in your direction. What is this? points out Old Leaf up near one of the long houses. In the distance, a large person, clothes seemingly covered in blood, is cursing loudly and stumbling about. He strag staggers into a longhouse, laughing. The dredge heading your direction turn back, roaring and begin to pound on the longhouse door. They seem to be holding a grudge against this particular person, you doubt the door will hold long. Let's rest and help him. Against my better judgement we should probably do something, you say. The others agree even though it means putting them all at risk. As you quickly approach the dredge have managed to splinter the door and break through. Hey! shouts of Valorang, all red, standing on the other side of the dredge. Came all the way up here, just for me? He seems unconcerned about the dredge as he hoists his enormous sword. Is Oh, it's sick, damn it. But it was Gonulf. <laughs> but no, Gonulf is dead. Which is sad, which is... <laughs> so goddamn sad. Hey, that gives plus to armor. Anyone wants it? Not really. That gives one strength resist. Who so will? I will give this to you because. Oh well. Oh, this is better actually. We are going against Dredge, so I'll let. No, we don't have any. So I'll let him do something. So I guess this is fine. Although those guys are great against armored enemies. Okay, I definitely don't want them like... Oh, maybe this looks good, actually. But I want them more like this. And something like this. Whoa, he's so fast! One. Well... He moves first, so... And he has Tempest. I can't stand uh, the way to hit both of them, so go for the four.
this one's gonna do some shady stuff, so I'm gonna hit with him first. But only because he runs away, so I mean, you know, unfortunately means nothing that he has to run. Okay, I'll help him. Although Rook is in a rough so spot already! Okay, go this way. Oh, not really. Yes, yes, that's good. And this guy will be next, so... I actually want Oddleaf to destroy eight of his armored moons. <laughs> oh, that was great. I could use her with this guy. Now let's kill him. No, not anymore. Not yet. You know what? Doing 8 damage. Just like this. Is great. Oh god damn it. Oddly full kill him. And that's good. Oh, full power minus 2. Of course works. We're gonna get hit with everything. Just get his armor down. I wanna kill him, but... Actually, I want to move like this. And there he is in there. Damage. And this this guy moves next. Oh god, that I forgot. Keep forgetting that I don't have enough willpower. Okay, old leaf, yes. Perfect. Can you you can kill him? Ooh, that hurts. It actually hurts. And he's gonna die no, he's gonna get hurt. Because I will do this. Oh no, that's not one. He can catch him, I think, no matter what. Actually, no, if I go over here, let's say do this, he won't be able to follow him. I actually fought this for. <laughs> It was, well, kinda safe. Don't worry, oddly, oddly, who just. No, we can't really move her. And she needs to move. Do it like this then. You can add two, so this means we can do it like this. Nice. Welcome to my mead house, sick burns house of mead. Wasn't expecting a world this far south or this strong. I can see that. There are people huddled in the corners of the meat hall, looking on with uneasiness. Who are all these... Who are you people? No, no, they're friends. 
They made this place, it's not really mine. You lured Dredge back to a room full of unarmed people? What is wrong with you? Come on, I saved everyone in here. They shared some fine drink. The best drink. Wait, I was saving your eyes. Us. Remember that part? If you knew you would come up here, you could have told me. What do we do with this guy? Anyone here is welcome to join us. The townspeople show you a huge sack of barrels stack of barrels filled with quality meat and help you haul them back to the caravan. I'll miss this place. Good memories. With some help, you gather up the casks of meat and head back to the caravan. Seek Bjorn and the other survivors in town. The caravan gives the boisterous vow a large berth as you set out the boss guard. Yeah, but actually we need to come. Yeah. Twice. And this is a good part. Actually, this is a very good place to end this part so far. Thank you very much. Stay alive. See you soon. Bye.